Recording in progress. Call the Ag Commission special meeting to order. Um, I just for the, I appreciate the input that uh, you people have had just to set the record straight. Um, this is for the commission to discuss what we've done, or done the, try to do a, a good a good job on um, incorporating all the comments that uh, we had. And just so you know, the citizens' comments will be item five on the agenda. Um, so start a uh, motion to approve the minutes of the um, February 9th meeting um, would be in order. So I have the um, changes correction. Okay, can you just move up to the mic a little bit? Cause you... Yeah. Thank you. I have changes and corrections, yeah. um, but if we want to. That's the time. Now's the time to bring them up. Yep. Um, so, like I did last time, I'm, I, most of them are just you know, little typo things. Um, but on item number three in the minutes correspondence, that wasn't an agenda item. It should have been. Um, but we did not have it as an agenda item. So I think it should be removed. Um, and then all the way to the bottom of page, that's page three. Um, there's one spot where I believe that Dave Clark asked about whether barbed wire was fencing, as it was typically found in New England fields. Okay. Uh -huh. Um, it, it wasn't included. I, I wrote it down, but it was among the questions about fencing. Yeah. And it was about barbed wire. Okay. If you wrote it right in, I'll go back and look at it. Yep. Um, and then the other part, there was a point where people were asking the assessor some questions. And I believe it was Diana Kucher mm -hmm. who asked um, about how the assessor would determine all of these criteria for particular parcels and pointed out that it would have to be done through field surveys, which requires time and resources. Other than that, it's just typos. You know, as always, I appreciate the work we do doing this. So, a motion to accept the minutes with uh, corrections um, is in order. I make a motion to accept the meetings with the changes. I'll second it. Um, any other comments? Those in favor say aye. 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 Aye is there? Yes. Okay, well, we've got four out of five. Uh, motion is approved. Um, correspondence from Michael Collins on the question. Uh, you want to read that? Or? I will, and Mr. Chairman. Um, just for the, for the record, we had a late piece of correspondence from uh, Jonathan Hainig, so I'll read that as well, but I'll read the, okay. uh, the lawyer's memo first. So this is uh, a memorandum from the law offices of Halloran and Sage LLP, uh, which is the town's legal counsel. Uh, and this was uh, in response to a question that Vern had posed and they, uh, Halloran and Sage responded with quite a good memo. Uh, so the memo is directed to Rich Roberts, who is uh, our, generally our land use attorney. He had forwarded our inquiry to Michael Collins, who is uh, one of his colleagues in the firm who specializes in assessment law. 
Uh, this memorandum is in response to a request for advice from Tara Pangesis, the Director of Planning and Development for the Town of Thompson, regarding the past and future participation by the town in the classification of land as open space for purposes of taxation pursuant to TA 490. The communication from Ms. Pangesic, which is attached, included a synopsis of relevant facts, as well as some attachments providing context for where the town is and has been on the issue. Reference to certain of those facts will be included below. Classification of land as open space for purposes of taxation is controlled by Connecticut General Statutes, Section 12-107E. Prior to July 1st, 1979, that statute read in pertinent part as follows. The planning commission of any municipality in preparing a plan, plan of development for such municipality may designate upon such plan areas which it recommends for preservation as areas of open land. Land included in any area so designated upon such plan as finally adopted may be classified as open space land for purposes of property taxation. As set forth in the synopsis that has been provided, the Town Planning Commission voted to approve the designation of open space land in town in the plan of development in June of 1979. The assessor at that time apparently began enrolling parcels as open space for purposes of taxation once the Planning Commission took this action. The state legislature passed Public Act 79-513 subsection three, which amended Connecticut General Statutes section 12-107E by adding the requirement that the designation of areas of open space land recommended for preservation in a plan of conservation and development for a municipality must be approved by a majority vote of the legislative body of such municipality. The public act and with it this requirement became effective on July 1st, 1979. The legislative body of the town of Thompson has never approved the designation. It is our opinion that once the amendment to the statute pursuant to the public act became effective, there was no authority for the assessor to enroll additional parcels as open space for purposes of taxation. There have been some court decisions that have interpreted the statute that support our conclusion. The Superior Court in Weeburn Country Club Incorporated Uh, the Superior Court in Weeburn Country Club Incorporated versus Town of Darien, 2010, uh, I don't know what L WL1006054, addressed a motion to strike the claim that the town had illegally changed the basis of the valuation of land used as a golf course, that when the town no longer considered it as recreational open space. In that case, the property had been valued beginning at some time in the 1970s based on its use as recreational open space. However, in October 2008 and 2009, the assessor assessed the property and did not base the value upon its current use as recreational space. The court found in striking the plaintiff's claim that the action by the town was illegal that the requirement of legislative body approval that was imposed in 1979 had not been satisfied. The court found further that it would be contrary to the statutes to allow the property owner to bypass the requirements of, of subsection 12-107E merely because the property has in the past been valued as open space. The court in Weeburn relied upon the Supreme Court case of Aspetuck Valley Country Club Incorporated versus Weston, 292 Connecticut 817 of 2009 in arriving at its decision. The two cases had similar but not identical facts. The property owner in Aspetuck owned property that had been used as a golf course for approximately 40 years. The property was designated as open space on the plan of development in 1969. The property owner applied for an open space designation for tax assessment purposes for the first time in 2004. The application was denied because the legislative body had not approved the designation by majority vote. The Supreme Court found on appeal that the legislative history 
of 12-107E was clear once it had been amended by Public Act 79-513, subsection 3, that the legislature intended that property designated as open space in a municipality's plan of development must be approved by a majority of the municipality's legislative body before it may be classified as open space land for tax assessment purposes. Conclusion. It is our opinion that once Public Act 79-513 subsection 3 became effective on July 1st, 1979, no property was eligible to be classified as open space for the purposes of taxation in any municipality until the legislative body of that municipality approved by a majority vote the designation of areas of open space land recommended for preservation in a plan of conservation. Since the legislative body of the town of Thompson has never approved the designation, no authority to classify any property as open space for purposes of taxation after July 1st, 1979 has been established. Any interpretation by a prior assessor that a program enrolling parcels as open space for purposes of taxation that was established prior to the amendment of general statute section 12-107E by public act 79-513 of section three was grandfathered such that, the parse, such that the requirement of legislative body approval did not apply was incorrect. No new parcels may be classified or enrolled as open space for purposes of taxation unless and until this statutory requirement has been satisfied. The steps to accomplish this that are discussed in the correspondence from Ms. Pengesic are appropriate. That is the correspondence from Halloran and Sage. And uh, this came in yesterday afternoon and this morning from uh, Jonathan Hainig. Uh, my family has owned and operated our business of Thompson Speedway and Raceway Golf Club here in town for 82 years this spring. This year also marks our 101st, 101 year anniversary, six generations, as landowners in town starting as dairy farmers in the early 1920s. This is John Hainick. Where was I? Uh, we have been made aware of how the town is working to implement new language on the classification of what qualifies for PA 490 open space which over 80% of our land has been under starting back to the early 2000s. We feel strongly that any land previously being taxed under an open space classification should be grandfathered in. Additionally, we do not support the proposed language. Open space shall not include areas kept as long grasses or those which include paved, graveled or graded parking areas, septic fields and reserve areas and or swimming pools or tennis courts. Fenced in areas shall not be eligible for assessment as open space. Open space should be treated in the same manner as some of our neighboring towns treat it, simply as any land excluding dwelling or commercial buildings. We do not feel that this issue is being looked at holistically for business operators like us who have been under these guidelines for years. We are already one of the highest taxpayers in town and one of the largest employers. With rising inflation and the hardships we have already endured, having to shut down many aspects of our business businesses during the pandemic, the last thing we need is another increase in taxes. We will be following this issue closely moving forward. Thank you, Jonathan Hainick. Those are the two pieces of correspondence received. And Valerie, yours are commissioner comments, I would suggest. So, uh, well, I have a question. You haven't received any other public emails? Because have people not. have told me after the last meeting that they were emailing and they had emailed. I save every email I get in a e folder for just that purpose, so I have not received any. Okay. Um, so we just received the correspondence, right? No, moment. I mean, that's the correspondence that has been received. Um, does anyone have any questions on? Well, we'll start with Helen and Sage's uh, response. No questions. Um, I, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, the, the 
short of it is we need to adopt this. That's what the charge is right now, to adopt the, um, well, to present a POCD uh, amendment. amendment to the POCD. And just again, to go back to the last meeting, we specifically asked for that comment because Vern right. wanted clarification that whether or not we could continue as we have done and based on prior action. And that is what short this is, to, clarify, is no. to clarify. That is correct. So moving on. Um, do we want to, uh, first of all, as far as uh, Thompson Speedway, is that, that um, that wouldn't be our purview to try and rule on that anyway, would it? Well, in as far as you're going to be discussing some options for the language for the TOCD, then you can consider his request and his comments as you would the, the public comments that we'd received prior. I would say at this point, we should probably have Paul provide some context with some of um, what's been suggested, because I think it's relevant. Well, we're, we're talking about the various criteria and the, the Hainigs in particular, I think, um, because we've, we've read their comments and we haven't had a chance to review them before. So I think the investigation of area one, most of them do Pomfret. I believe Pomfret is any acreage over two acres. That's interesting because I mean, when you look at the Connect Farm Bureau, they specifically mentioned Brooklyn and Putnam, and that I mean, saying what I the research I was doing today, they don't mention any of that. Yeah, so I pulled down uh, Putnam. <laughs> I mean, they're providing this information to everybody that's looking at the uh, vehicle 90 and specifically with only an acreage. And I, and I did talk to the assessors. Administer this program currently, excluding. Is that. Um... Is that really important? Are we supposed to be putting in every detail, or are we just our goal to get the uh, um, DOCD to include uh, recognizing open space? Well, what I have suggested, and it's up to you guys, right? I'm I'm just advisory here, and not I'm not a voting member. What I have suggested is that. Um, you forward this to the Planning and Zoning Commission for their meeting on Monday, this being your recommendation of the language to adopt in the BOCD. Now, just as you have the option to make suggestions and changes to what's proposed here, so will they at that time. Yeah. Um, it's an advisory role, but that is what I would say is the, the task at hand. Uh, to provide just a little more context to piggyback on what Paul was talking about, uh, when I first started looking at the parcels that are enrolled in TA 490, uh, I think some people saw my initial sort of discussion guide, you know, in things to consider as to what areas to include or not include. Uh, and I had initially led with the idea that we would exclude the business development district and uh, the places that have um, public water and sewer utility essentially, because they're meant for higher density. As I was looking at the map, um, I realized that that was not gonna be feasible, which is why based on the precedent, I 
conceded and said, yes, we will look at parcels in any portion of town, which includes the business development district, because I don't see there's any way to extricate ourselves from that. Um, but that is not the same as saying that a parcel that is used commercially uh, or otherwise developed um, would therefore be allowed to be included. It's, it's a slightly different set of standards. So if, if I may, um, I would like to read into the record the letter that I sent to the commission and I would like it to be considered as an alternative. So I'm, I'm Valerie Clark, member of the Agricultural Commission in Thompson. On February 22nd, I wrote a letter to the Agricultural Commission and I'll read what it said. The intent of PA 490 is its use as a tool to benefit municipalities by keeping expenses low and thereby the taxes to the citizens by supporting less intensive uses, non-commercial, non-residential. It has been shown through many studies that residences or dwellings consume far more municipal resources than they produce in tax income with commercial enterprises consuming the next most. Parcels which are not containing <clears throat> dwellings and are not commercial building produce income for the town. The other purpose of PA 490 is to keep available land which could quickly be turned into agricultural production, timber or food or fiber products. As we saw and continue to see through the pandemic, the ability to quickly self-support our basic needs for survival, food in particular, wood products as well, is critical in the event of an emergency affecting crops or supply chains. And I have a series of quotes from the Connecticut State Government website, quote, it must be noted that Public Act 490 allows farmers to continue to farm and other landowners to continue to own forest and open space land without being forced to sell it to pay the local property tax, unquote. Another quote from their website, even in the early 1960s, legislative intent identified PA 490 as an important land preservation tool, unquote. Another quote from the same Connecticut State Government website, when the legislature passed Public Act 490 in 1963, it included and continues to this day in the law's wording that it was, quote, in the public interest to encourage the preservation of farm, forest, and open space land, unquote. Thus, in this respect, it is very fair. Additionally, even with the lower property tax collected, the towns do not sacrifice property tax revenues because of public act 490. Studies done across the nation and closer to home by the American Farmland Trust have conclusively proven that property tax revenues generated by farm, forest, or open space land are far greater than the expenditures by the town to service that land. Under the current structure, the residential sector costs the town more to service than the amount of property tax generated from that. Because commercial and industrial development require services and attract more residents, these sectors may also result in increased tax burden. Thus, farm, forest, and open space land can actually help control and maintain reasonable rates of property taxation for all town taxpayers, unquote. Yet another quote from that same Connecticut website, open space land designated in a municipality's development plan, the land must maintain and enhance natural or scenic resources, protect streams or water supply, promote soil conservation, enhance the value of parks, forests, or other open spaces, enhance public recreation, opportunities, preserve historic sites, or promote orderly development. Another quote, the goal of the PA 490 program is to provide landowners with tax relief to one, encourage preservation, and two, reduce the financial pressure to convert the property into other uses, unquote. 
then from the Connecticut Farm Bureau's PA 490 guidebook. And I will make an aside here and remind folks that John Nichols had recommended that we not change what we have done historically. Here's the quote from the Connecticut PA 490 guidebook. This purpose and intent is clearly spelled out in section 12-107A of the Connecticut General Statutes Declaration of Policy A, that it is in the public interest to encourage the preservation of farmland, forest land, and open space land in order to maintain a readily available source food and farm products close to the metropolitan areas of the state to conserve the state's natural resources and to provide for the welfare and happiness of the inhabitants of the state. B, it is in the public interest to prevent the forced conversion of farmland, forest land, and open space land to more intensive uses as the result of economic pressures caused by the assessment thereof for purposes of property taxation at values incompatible with their preservation as farmland, forest land, and open space land, and C, that the necessity in the public interest of the enactment of the provisions of section 7-131C and 12-107B to 12-107E inclusive is a matter of legislative determination." Unquote. From the Connecticut Farm Bureau guidebook, quote, farmland, forest land, open space, and maritime heritage land require few, if any, public services such as education. Use value is therefore warranted for these lands that have limited impact on local government expenditures. Use taxation also reflects the concern that market, market value taxation would result in forced conversion of valuable farmland forest land and open space into incompatible uses. The conversion can cost municipalities far more in the long run than the presumed loss of a percentage of current revenue. And then there were three qualification, I'm sorry, two qualification criteria that were listed as examples that I cited here um, because of the recommendation within it. One is from the town of Brooklyn qualification criteria. All land within the town of Brooklyn may be eligible for the open space classification. And this is the emphasis. Where there is a residence on the property, it is any land in excess of the zone lot size. Quote. Town of Putnam qualification criteria. A minimum of five acres to qualify. And then emphasis. If there is a dwelling on the parcel, then there must be a minimum of seven acres to qualify. So thus, I propose the below revision to the recommendation to the Thompson Planning and Zoning Commission, which aligns with the intent of PA 490 and also reflects the historic tax assessment for properties in Thompson, which exceed three acres. Here's my recommendation. In order to reduce the financial pressure to sell land and to incentivize the preservation of open space within the town of Thompson, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends the adoption of the open space classification of PA 490 with the following criteria. Land in all zoning districts of Thompson is eligible for consideration. The minimum area eligible for classification as open space shall be three acres of vacant or undeveloped land as described below. In the town of Thompson, the following land types shall be eligible for the open space classification. Any acreage within a parcel which does not contain a residential dwelling or a commercial building. In cases where a parcel contains portions which contain a residential dwelling or commercial building, the three acre minimum shall be land in excess of any portion containing such a structure. That portion shall be calculated at a minimum as the area of a single building lot within the given zoning district. In cases where the calculated area of the specific building or building exceed that of a single building lot, the area <coughs> excluded from the open space designation shall not exceed the actual area occupied by the buildings. Open space shall not include residential dwellings or commercial buildings, 
land containing other structures such as outbuildings or those supporting recreational or agricultural use shall be included. Land set aside under open space requirement through a subdivision or conservation subdivision shall not be eligible for enrollment in CK 90. Such land is to be preserved permanently as open space as described in the subdivision regulations of the town of Thompson. The end of my letter. I would like to make a motion that we discuss that proposal. I'll second it. Um, anyone, any questions for Valerie on her? Um, any comments on her recommendations? The only thing at this point, now that um, we have heard from the attorney, is that I would want to add that anyone who is currently assessed under the open space criteria not have to reapply. Question, Paul. Go ahead. Uh, I'm not, you may want to run that by me again. So anybody that's applied after 1979, so I would go as far as to say that the, the memo more or less supports that conclusion already, but we certainly can ask for further clarification. Well, I don't want to hold it up for that, so maybe we can ask for that clarification to advise the PNC at a later time. Advise the PNC at a later time. That perhaps they might want to include an aspect in this recommendation that they approve to not require those that are currently assessed under open space to reapply. But I don't think it's critical to what we're doing tonight. No, I, I agree. We can ask that question. Um, is that set aside what you were asking, Paul? Storm, Well, no, because I mean, I'm just just stating. Actually, it'll it. correct me if I'm wrong. It should relieve a whole world of uh, applications between July and. October 1 or the deadline, uh, if everyone that is uh, got land on the open space has to put in an application, it's going to be working overtime. Well, the good news is it wouldn't really be overtime. And they're just updating an application. So it's not that I would go in and modify it. Oh, you're, are you resetting? If you're not grandfathering, Resetting the timer on everybody's stuff at 10 years and you're reapplying at that point. So, I, like I said, I mean, this, I think, I hadn't you, thought of that. Yeah, I think you're yes. talking about, like, that, I think you're talking, to be very honest, more legal costs that the town can afford to do that. We're opening up a can of worms here, but I mean, and I get your point. I mean, I certainly understand what we said. And I, and I think. In the program that has to be submitted uh, new application to validate starting every tax. Yeah. So can we do that? Well, can we don't know. That's yeah. what we have to. So, so my my point. <laughs> my point that's, all. That's a big. That's a big thing. My point all along in this pursuit is to do the right thing and the right thing by the townspeople. The townspeople for 43 years thought they had a program that had been codified properly. The town at some point missed that beat. And I am relentlessly trying to correct this for the townspeople because it's not fair to them. Well, I thought that was the whole reason of the last meeting and this meeting, so that we could yep. get this in the works as 
uh, make a recommendation to C and Z so that it could move on. If um, it is, but it has other implications. I, mean, I don't think there's any way we can escape the implications if they're there. I mean, it's a legal process, right? And it's a legal process that we haven't observed. I, I get it, but I also know what that means and I also know where that ends up. So that's not, I, I cannot even imagine if that's where it goes. I can't even begin to fathom what that means for Johnson. I don't think Johnson can afford to I, go through this. No, they cannot. <coughs> So, my recommendation. Um, I, I think we personally going to reach out after this meeting and you know, real estate for 35 years. I'm going to reach out to some people and find out how this, how municipalities resolve these kind of situations. So, and Joan may know because yeah. Joan said that we are not the first town to have had this. Yeah. My understanding from Joan's presentation two, two meetings ago was that. That was why she was recommending we not change anything and that we just codify. Um, anyone else? I'll, I'll certainly be happy, and I'm sure Paul will be, to discover that we don't have to go yeah, through. Yeah, that would be horrible. But, you know, the, the, the response, the legal response of that is going to be the legal response, and we're going to be locked I read it. the legal response. I read the case law. Um, to me, it said we shouldn't have done it. It was not valid, but it doesn't mean that you can't move forward. I, I couldn't figure out from that what it meant. I read the decision that didn't really say much beyond, you know, this is not the way it should have been, and they lost the case. It didn't say what the financial part of that was. What I well, do what I do think is that the only entity that would really have standing to sue the town of Thompson is the state. And I don't think the state is interested in doing that. However, And what OPM does have the ability to do, and they do do it occasionally to municipalities, is they have the right to um, essentially prevent the town from receiving discretionary state funding until something is resolved. And we've, we have run into that before. Sure. So, I thought that. Shouldn't be an issue then. Thank you. I think that's super important. If I may, Mr. Chairman, just in response to Valerie's um, suggested text, I actually think there's a couple of things in there that are really good. Uh, and again, I'm I'm just here in advisory capacity, but uh, in that advisory capacity, I would still uh, express a preference mostly for uh, the text I've already drafted with the following exceptions based on Valerie's recommendations. Uh, I think she made a good call here in the third, in the second um, open circle bullet point here in cases where the calculated areas of the specified buildings exceed that of a single building lot, the area excluded from the open space designation shall not exceed the actual area occupied by the building. I did not address a similar point in my draft, and I think that's a good no one. Yeah, yeah. That, that's a good one, Valerie. And um, similarly, I would say in her last open circle bullet point, uh, I would add the second sentence, land containing other structures such as outbuildings or those supporting, uh, although I would strike recreational, supporting agricultural use shall be included. And I would add that 
to my bullet point uh, land, which is being farmed for personal use, where it allows for fenced in areas of those areas, I would also include outbuildings for those areas. As I think that's consistent with the intent of uh, the public act and also with what was drafted there. Any comments? I have comments about the whole grass. I, again, really late in trying to figure this all out, the grassland and fences. If, if I qualify as farm under PA 490 and I choose to keep 20 acres of grass and fence it in, I know, I'm, I'm, I, I got it, I got that. But what, what I'm getting at, you, you walked right into it, thank you. Why are we not affording the same thing to open? I, the way I read it, it didn't really sound different. So, I mean, so if we're referring specifically to lawn grasses, I would say that- I can do that on a farm. I can make 20 acres, I can make 100 acres of lawn grass and I still qualify. I can fence it all in. I can put picket fence around it. I still qualify. So, yeah, I know. I, I, I called and asked. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So why why restrict the open space for those? I, I don't. I I didn't ask about paved. I didn't ask about sure. you know the other things. But I, I no, was I think, just curious. I think it's a fair question, Vern. And I, I, my response to it, I guess, would be because lawn grasses are actually disruptive of that's the natural the environment. Yeah. 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 And I would say that the grasses are they can, but within open space, including hobby farms, lawn grasses would be simple in the of not for an agricultural It could be, purpose. it could be yeah. aesthetic. I mean, it's still open space. And I mean, if you read, it's for the improvement of aesthetics and surrounding areas. And I mean, I, I disagree. I think if you can do it, uh, why are we not affording those same privileges to somebody applying for open? or a farm. And lawn grasses can be easily yeah. converted to farm crops and it, it's it's yeah, not development. So I mean, keeping space open with grasses or, or manicured, if you will. I mean, I've been on a lot of farms with you. And again, I'm not saying that that is directly applies to open space unless we make it do that. But I mean, reading the statute, it's saying we're promoting these things and fencing and lawn grass does not and attract. I don't think it was, and I don't completely disagree with what you're saying. And I don't think fencing in the actual sense the walls. Right, but it's I mean, but if somebody were to put I get but it. We, that's not have, that's not very aesthetic, but we have other regulations that cover that, and you tax fencing right. over certain height. So I don't think it applies. I'm I'm with Vern on this. So Vern, Vern, would you feel more comfortable with the exclusions described if long grasses were yeah, just dropped? Yeah, just take the long grasses and fencing. Well. Because you already have statutes for the I'm fencing. Going to push back on the fencing because again, if the purpose of if part of the purpose of open space is to preserve things like wildlife corridors no, and the connectivity of that. open land. It does, it does not say that. that. You're right. I, I went through this today extensively. It does this, I mean that may be our interpretation. That is not the interpretation of right. this is it. not a wilderness act. This is a farmland and and taxation and municipal expense act. So what are you saying then? To take out the grasses and fences. And put in the max area. That I think is a good call, Valerie. Oh, and are then, you? And then I only have one more question if we're back on Tara's version of this, which and I can read it since we haven't read it aloud again if you want. Yes, please. 
uh, I'll read it unamended, understand it, that we've just um, mm -hmm. suggested some changes. In order to reduce the financial pressure to sell land and to incentivize the preservation of open space within the town of Thompson, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends the adoption of the open space classification of PA 490 with the following criteria. Land in all zoning districts of Thompson is eligible for consideration. The minimum area eligible for classification as open space shall be three acres of vacant or undeveloped land. In cases where a parcel includes developed portions, the three acre minimum shall be land in excess of any developed portion. The developed portion shall be calculated at a minimum as the area of a single building lot within the given zoning district. Open space shall not include areas kept as lawn grasses or those which include paved, graveled, or graded parking areas, septic fields and reserve areas, and or swimming pools or tennis courts. Fenced in areas shall not be eligible for assessment as open space except as described below. In the town of Thompson, the following land types shall be eligible for the open space classification. Forested land, which is not otherwise eligible for the forest land classification. For example, parcels less than 25 acres or parcels which are not certified by a state forester. Land which is being farmed for personal use. For example, pasture land, apiaries, or other homestead agriculture. If the land being farmed for personal use includes fenced in areas related to the agricultural use, then those areas shall be eligible for open space classification. Areas being kept as managed meadows, which may require occasional maintenance mowing or clearing of invasive species for conservation purposes. Areas which include historic stone walls, which shall not be considered fenced in. Land set aside under the open space requirements for a subdivision or a conservation subdivision shall not be eligible for enrollment in PA 490. Such land is to be preserved permanently as open space as described in the subdivision regulations of the town of Thompson. Again, that was read unamended, even though we've just mm -hmm. had some other um, pieces added. So what would change if we are including the comments we just made. So the second bullet point would essentially be the same as Valerie is proposed here. So in cases where a parcel includes portions, which, oh no, it's not quite the same, I'm sorry. In cases where a parcel includes developed portions, the three acre minimum shall be land in excess of any developed portion. The developed portion shall be calculated at a minimum as the area of a single building lot within the given zoning district. In cases where the calculated area of the, of the specified buildings exceed that of a single building lot, the area excluded from the open space designation shall not exceed the actual area occupied by the buildings. Uh, and then in the next bullet point, it would be amended to read, Open space shall not include areas. Open space shall not include areas which include awkward. Uh, let's see if I can phrase that better. Open space shall not include paved, graveled, or graded parking areas, septic fields and reserve areas, and or swimming pools or tennis courts. And also, you would have to add, I think, to the second bullet point to incorporate this land containing other structures such as building, such as outbuildings or those supporting recreational or agricultural use shall be included. I would still suggest striking recreational there. So let's read that second bullet point with both amendments. In cases where a parcel includes developed portions, three acre minimum shall be land in excess of any developed portion. The developed portion shall be calculated at a minimum as the area of a single building lot within the given zoning district. In cases where the calculated area of the specified buildings exceed that of a single building lot, the area excluded from the open space designation shall not exceed the actual area occupied by the building. Land containing other structures such as outbuildings 
or those supporting agricultural use shall be included. It means that it's an open space so that, that it's not so it's clearer. Anyone in, any questions or comments on what Perry just heard? Oh, um, so that's the base of what we need to present to the... Well, that's what you guys have to ultimately vote and decide on tonight is what you're passing up to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Could be all of Valerie's, could be all of mine, well, could I be thought... that edited version. You might want to vote on certain elements discreetly if you feel you don't have consensus, but that's up to you. Any of your thoughts on the way she read it? She incorporated some of uh, the original into uh, Valerie's. The next thing you got to remember is we're presenting this to, the, uh, recommending this to the uh, zoning commission. Um, then from there it goes to the selectmen and then to the public meeting. Which means the zoning commission can revise what we. Well, Either right. one of those two bodies can but, do that. That is we're, correct. We're, we're making, making a recommendation. recommendation. Right. So what what right. we are trying to recommend is what we feel is based on the comments we're getting is best for the town. And from there, again, we're making a recommendation. We're, we're right. strictly advisory mm -hmm. as Shira has been here. We're not. We don't have any authority to make this happen. We right. just have. We're just sending something. And I think that um, that really incorporates, I can't think of any comments that were made in previous meetings that uh, we haven't addressed there. Um, you want to go bullet point by bullet point on that sort of blended one and vote to affirm each bullet point? I th think that might give you clarity. May I ask? question of you. How difficult is it to make that change right now, print it for us, and let us vote whether in discuss? Five minutes if you guys want to take a little break. I'm sorry? And, and the reason I'm saying that is that then we have in writing what we're discussing. Well, that's and, fine with me. I, yeah, and if you guys want to, you know, pause, take a break, and come back in five, ten minutes so we can get this done, then we can just read it. I mean, there's no reason you can't take a break at a meeting. Right. Okay. Hang in there, everybody. I'm going to pause the recording just so we can do that. So if anybody wants to and step away. Perhaps before we do that, I may be stepping out of line, but if we were to ask if there's any citizens' comment, or we go through addressing these changes that we need to consider. Hearing none so far. Okay. So, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 <laughs> well, I didn't see a hand, Sarah. <laughs> Valley White, 308 East Thompson Road. And I would like to reiterate to encourage the Agricultural Commission because you do have the authority to make the recommendation to planning and zoning. So you have authority, you have influence, you are landowners in the town. We have influence, but we don't have the authority to make this pass. Other at, than- At what level? At meaning at planning and zoning or at the-, um, at the Town meeting. Town well, meeting. Well, two things. Your recommendation carries a lot of weight right. and, and right. should not be- I'm not less, dismissing it. Okay. Right. And then the other thing is that, um, God willing, you're available, you'll go to vote at the town meeting. So um, you have two significant opportunities. And the recommendation of the commission should carry more weight than the advice from staff. So um, give it your all. Oh, we are. And I'm just, I wanted to make it crystal clear that we are not the approving entity. We are making a recommendation, the best recommendation that I think we can make. I think nine out of ten people listening and in the room understand that. Okay. Well, I wanted to make it clear. And what is perplexing to me is that 
we've had a policy based on state law that has worked effectively for over 43 years. Uh, neither the citizens nor any committee or commission in town has sought to alter that. So it would seem that the reasonable thing would be do is to simply codify what we have in place. Unless there's something that is perhaps more beneficial to the landowners that are already in place. If there is any attempt to alter it that would diminish what has been in place, then that should raise some real red flags as to what is the motivation, what is the benefit of the town to the town, and what would be the, the consequence. If there are existing alterations to the policy that we've had in place for 40 years, that would diminish that, then we need to have a clear understanding of if there are any benefits derived from any alteration. And if they're not revealed, then I think that puts up a real- Do you have anything to, that you're specifically pointing at? Um, well, I was just gonna ask because there's been so many different iterations, I'm wondering now, and maybe the clear, maybe it would be clarified when, when this is put together okay. in one clean piece. So I appreciate that. And because um, I'm not sure if there is anything different. We've it, tried to meld all of the suggestions as best we could. Let her get this printed up and we'll see whether it satisfies you. In the meantime, if you've got anything in particular that you think that we've changed from what you just suggested, um, except try to clarify a number of the points. Um, you yeah. can come back when she comes back. My understanding is that one, what one of your commission members has proposed is as close to what has been in existence. That's my attempt. And so I think a number of people in the room and listening would like to see the commission go forward with what Mrs. Clark has recommended as policy. Um, and then I think that if the commission seeks to alter anything, I would hope they would present um, what benefits, clear benefits would be, would be given to the uh, property owners in, in town. And um, so the comment had been made at the last meeting, Tira, that the way what were you were looking at then that it wouldn't, you thought it wouldn't pass. I think that there are ways that this could be phrased that it would have challenges passing one or more levels of scrutiny. Um, are you referring to what Mrs. Clark has proposed? I, it is my opinion that if we take Valerie's suggested text and pass that up, it would have more trouble passing than what I am suggesting. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I just want again, for the benefit of the commission, we'll be making their recommendation going forward. That um, I think that's what's perplexing to the, to the public and the landowners. If we've had something in place for 40 plus years that none of the commissions or committees challenged and the townspeople as a whole didn't challenge, why in the world would, would planning and zoning reject something that has been so harmonious and, then, and has given such a sense of contentment to the people. We're so trying that's... to make this, I don't know that they're gonna, I have no answer, I am on the commission, but I can't say that, that uh, we're trying to make it as, as um, compatible and so that people will understand what we're asking. I haven't figured out where you're coming from. That it sounds like you want us to change something that you haven't even seen yet. Um, my my personal proposal as a landowner would would be to encourage you to simply codify what we already have, codify what we already have, or what which I think Mrs. Clark's proposal closely okay. matches. So, um, and I just for the benefit of um, you received a letter from uh, Jonathan Honig and. Um, and his reference to grandfathering in. And when I think of grandfathering in, uh, the 
majority of the land there for all of it was the Carlton Farm that became the Honig Farm. When I was a young girl, we pastured our beet cattle on what is now the back nine. So if you're looking at grandfathering, that has a long history of being a big farm. And uh, the granddaughter of the Carlton family is still alive and 100 years old in Thompson is still able to tell the story. So there are, there is so-called commercial land, which has been agricultural land for well over 100 years. And so when we're grandfathering in, I think that has a lot of um, validity, momentum okay. there. Thank you. Thank you. I want to get your, I'm sorry. I'll hand it up first. Uh, Al Landry, 33 Randall. In 79, there was a couple of things. Well, they, there were. They weren't including this. But I think it might be good to put these are not under open space with the solar arrays and windmills. I don't believe either one would be considered uh, open space with me, Paul. Yeah, but it's good to it's good to spell things out. Paul and I actually discussed this just today. In some instances, I think we see where for the main work of this farm, and that can elevate solar panels on it, can elevate ground mounts. And we can't farm. And in fact, we have any discretion for that in the updated zoning regulation. That is Connecticut. I mean, He's right. I, I've actually seen this. We don't, as the town, do not have the authority to administer that program. That is farm. So you can put a farm together, put up solar panels that are 15 feet off the ground and graze underneath that, and it would qualify as the state farmland PA49. That would be that would be farmland, not farm open space. Farmland. Yes, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. But what we're talking about, right? But I'm just saying, I mean, talking about making right. it right. I just want to be, yeah. I'm just so, stating so just that it could. Just to be clear, Al, your suggestion is that we should specify that as an exclusion for open space. Is that what you're saying? I just want to understand very, very clearly what you're saying. Well, I have suggested that you have a definition of open space. You know, as I'm saying it in zoning, we had a lawyer coming in and black here. Tell us when go, things go to court, you live and die, you die on your bed. Well, that'll be a part of the crafting of the ordinance later. The definitions will be part of the ordinance. Since the POCD, this is a weird thing with the POCD. That is not normally a regulatory document, it's a guidance document. So there isn't the same weight as having a glossary in a, the zoning regulations or the ordinances. When eventually we get to the point of crafting the ordinance, because that's sort of the next to last step, the last one being going to town meeting, um, I'm sure I'm gonna be sitting there with you and Joanne and Donna and, and the others trying to create the ordinance that matches it. Okay. I think we've Actually, Brenda had a comment. Yeah, in there. I was going to go to Brenda. Oh, uh, Brenda Lillian and Kathy Rose. Um, Tiara, could you explain what you mean by if, if what if you were, were to adopt mm -hmm. Valerie's word as opposed to yours? Can you explain why you feel there could be a problem with that? What specifically? What I what I feel is that the language is too broad and leaves too much gray area in its interpretation. And it is my opinion. And let's be clear, until it goes to town meeting, I don't get a vote at any point until as a resident, at the end, I go and I put my thumbs up or thumbs down like the rest of you. But based on conversations that I have had. I would say that if it is not a very tightly defined set of criteria, that it may have trouble passing one or more of those levels of scrutiny. So specifically, give me an example of something 
she asked you know, that, that, that you yeah. have um, clarified better. I would say that the language stating any acreage within a parcel which does not contain a residential dwelling or a commercial building is too broad. I think that there are forms of development that don't involve either of those kinds of structures um, that would not qualify as open space. Um, and I think actually one of those cases, if we're gonna be talking would be the fact that the speedway itself has been classified as open space. It's made of pavement. That's just, I don't, I don't see how any interpretation can really get you to the conclusion that that would be open space, regardless of the fact that they've been recognized as a tree. So I want to speak to that. So the reason why that would be considered open space is because it is not residential and not consuming the public resources such as education, um, fire. Well, by that it's standard, not the town well, service. By that standard, any commercial building would therefore, because commercial also is uh, beneficial in a tax aid. It's only residential properties that are underwater in terms of their tax. No, commercial is also, and it, and in the quotes that I cited, it specifically says that, that commercial buildings draw residents and also consume town resources. So that was what I used when I developed that. And in addition to that, I used what I know because I've been a resident this entire time that I know was being administered in town. So that was what I used to, to write that. And that was why I was so specific about how to interpret it. My interpretation was that farmland is uh, tax positive, even though they, at the lowest rate, commercial was still positive and, and, and Residential is in, is underwater. Uh, I didn't bring the book with me, but I'm sure that's what. Because here's the quote from Connecticut's website: "Because commercial and industrial development require services and attract more residents, these sectors may also result in increased tax burdens." And well, that's Connecticut's. I mean, there there are a number of of different ways Connecticut has worded it. Um, and it also worded differently in the 490 guidebook from the Connecticut Farm Bureau. But regardless, that was why I was trying to be that specific so that the interpretation was very specific. A, if there's a dwelling or a commercial building, um, if there's a dwelling or a commercial building, that those areas be excluded and no less than a building lot, if those exist, those buildings exist. And if they're larger than a building lot in area, then, then don't max beyond that. Um, and uh, because the person that came up to me at the end of the last meeting just came into the room, that said that they had sent correspondence. I'm afraid I'm gonna call on them, I apologize. My understanding was that someone you knew had sent email correspondence regarding um, this. Not necessarily prior to this meeting. Uh, Angela Ozier, 1348, we're um, But prior to, at the last meeting, the one before that, I know a few people that that in correspondence that was never read in as part of your minutes. I'm sorry. I misunderstood what you were asking then. What I thought you were asking was comments on the text. And I received only the one from John. I do have from one or two meetings ago, some general statements of people saying they support open space. 
I was I was not viewing those as relevant to this because it was not in response to that. I am happy to read those. They're all kind of boilerplate, but I, I think that why don't we do that at the end? What to propose we do that sure. at the end? Let if unless there are other comments. I just had a comment about correspondence and a question, I guess. So when someone uh, goes to the town website and it says contact us mm -hmm. and you think it's going to the commission, does it go to the commission then? Sort of. Um, it goes to the selectman's office and depending on what um, commission you've directed it to, it then gets forwarded. So all of the stuff that was received on PA 490 was forwarded to me to keep those in the e file, which I have, so I can read those. I can read those in. Okay. But the commission doesn't kind of have a mailbox. When so people to speak. think that, oh, I can't make this meeting, but I want the commission to hear my thoughts, and they're not. They're not getting that. But I'm I'm happy to I'm happy to share those for sure. Okay, if you could. Uh, Ray you Ray uh, Ray Williams is waiting too. Ray, go go ahead. You can take yourself off sure. mute. Okay, on our first meeting, we had the this Ray Williams 190 Port of Plain Road. Um, and our first meeting that we got together with, we had the woman from the state and she recommended us to keep stuff the way it was. Now, in 1979, the planning and zoning did everything that they were supposed to do. And so it was either the assessor or it was the town clerk that dropped the ball on the paperwork. And everybody knows what the intent was. I know that what the town thinks about intent and they don't do what the intent is supposed to be, but it, it should go right through the way it was supposed to be back in 1979, by my opinion. And I think the way Valerie wrote that up is the way that it should go. And uh, that's what I got to say. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Anybody else? Uh, Bill Warner, Wall Davis Grove. I just want to say I think you ought to go with Valerie's search. I've been in the open space program for about 35 years, and I know it was pretty much any excess acreage you had, you just put it in open space. And I think they let uh, the speedway in just because it's a recreation area that's left into open space. And I think we should just keep it that way and we shouldn't worry about whether other boards don't pass it along because I wouldn't want to be on the planning and zoning board or on the board of selectmen and then turn around and say, you got rid of open space in the town. I haven't quite followed you. That's what we're trying to avoid is having. I know, I know, but Tyra's uh, reasoning was that if you didn't, if you didn't go with, if you went with Valerie's version, it may not pass either the planning and zoning board or it may not pass the board of selectmen. And I'm just saying that if the board of selectmen decide not to vote for Valerie's version, they'd have to deal with the town and telling everybody that they just lost their open space. Okay, take your opinion and under advisement. Okay. Paul? I, I hear a lot of people talking about the 19th. 79 write up that the planning commission did at that time. I think it would be beneficial to read it because I'm not sure a lot of people have read it or heard it. And I, I think it would be a lot clearer. Is there more than just the minutes from that meeting? That's what we have. Okay. Well, I thought that That's that was part of the problem. Right. We don't have much. <laughs> uh, so this is what was in the minutes from the 18th of June, 1979, a meeting of the Thompson Planning Commission. And for clarity, at that time, planning and zoning were two separate commissions. Discussion of lot size and minimum area for open space when less than 25 acres are involved. In order to prevent forced sale of land, the commission adopts as part of their plan of development for the town, a statement which declares those tracts in excess of a given acreage and unbuilt on or undeveloped to be critical to the preservation of the environment in the town. 
This action will enable those landowners who are not eligible for either the farm or forest use assessments to be eligible for a lower assessment on their land. Motion made by Bruce Seeger, seconded by Donald Hayes, to set the minimum area for open space in the town of Thompson at three acres, motion carried. That is the only record of the intent. So it does state the intent of minimum area. It does not state any other intent in terms of criteria that could be set. And I think that is where Paul and I would agree the lack of specificity is problematic. Which is why I wrote it up to be specific. I'm built upon or undeveloped. So the intent of this was to preserve the environment. The character. Today, but it is here. And what we're trying to do is to codify what has been administered all these years. And what I'm hearing, and I'm hearing it from various places, um, is that this was how it was administered, was how I wrote it up, and that's what should be codified. So it wasn't really administered, it was just acted on. And I think, um, I think we could present that that was done in 1979, and you can be rest assured that it would get uh, knocked down, not approved. I'm saying that what I presented was very specific and aligns with what has been administered for open space tax reduction in town. 43 years, yet is also very specific in how to administer it because it states in the bullets that I wrote what is and is not included. It doesn't use vague terms like development. Development is very vague. All right, I guess uh, the question is do you think that? Um there are suggestions or that were incorporated into um, Valerie's is appropriate, or you want to go with Valerie's carte blanche? I'd love, I would love to see what we're, I mean, I don't have your printed copy. I don't have. We don't have the. So let's, let's go with the plan that we had before, which is uh, I'll create the version that includes the edits that we did seem to have consensus on into my draft, mm -hmm. and then we'll have Valerie's draft. Yep. And then you can make your decision. And you know, again, to be clear, I am gonna pass up as a document to the Planning and Zoning Commission, whatever comes out of this. Planning and Zoning Commission has the option to make their own suggestions and amendments before they vote on it. The Board of Selectmen will have that same opportunity. Um, so. You know, there are layers of approvals this is still going through, just to be clear. Uh, but I'm going to pause the recording now, and so everybody stretch your legs, and I'm going to go what, print this up and have copies for the commission, and we'll be back. Carol will read the, uh, actually, the copies up here. It's page two, starting on the third paragraph. Yeah, just above the bullet points. Is that something you can present on screen too? Um, Maybe not. Probably. Because I saved it to my network, so I should have access. Just, uh, and it's, it's set two at a time. That's it. You got Okay. Over. Do I have to close this and refresh it? I might have to close it and refresh it. No, it's all right. If I can do it, I'll Take do it. Pair. I don't know that, that. Let me see that a minute. I can tell you. Yeah, this is a pair. This is, the second page is the one that has the information on it. That we 
It's pertinent now. So, so this sorry. is this is yours. This no, is no, combined. This is the combined. The one that the second page wrote. is what is the combined. What we're going to be reading. You could take an out the twenty five acre forest land piece. The not certified by the state. Well, that was the last meeting. That but, was a recommendation, and in, in the marginal notes, I had recommended right, leaving, that's what leaving, it in, right. leaving it in there. But no. We had recommended that it come out, and it was in the it was out of the redlined version. I have a printout of the redlined version, and it was out. Well, you can you can strike it again if you want. I mean that that's yep. that's the direction you want to go. We should have a date in the Okay. So, Mr. Chairman, which oops, you want me to just read this? Uh, well, I want to share it to the screen too. I just want to get it to the right spot. Okay. And here. And share screen. That was actually a good idea, Valerie, because Ties is obviously a commissioner and she's online, so she should be able to follow along. Okay, so this is um, a blended text, uh, taking some of Valerie Clark's suggestions and incorporating them into the bullet points I had previously worked up. In order to reduce the financial pressure to sell land and to incentivize the preservation of open space within the town of Thompson, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends the adoption of the open space classification of PA 490 with the following criteria. Land in all zoning districts of Thompson is eligible for consideration. The minimum area eligible for classification as open space shall be three acres of vacant or undeveloped land. In cases where a parcel includes developed portions, the three acre minimum shall be land in excess of any developed portion. The developed portion shall be calculated at a minimum as the area of a single building lot within the given zoning district. In cases where the developed area exceeds the size of a single building lot, the area excluded from the open space designation shall not exceed the actual developed area. Open space shall not include paved, graveled, or graded parking areas, septic fields and reserve areas, and or swimming pools or tennis courts. In the town of Thompson, the following land types shall be eligible for the open space classification. Forested land, which is not otherwise eligible for the forest land classification, e.g. parcels less than 25 acres or parcels which are not certified by a state forester. Land which is being farmed for personal use, e.g. pasture land, apiaries, or other homestead agriculture. If the land being farmed for personal use includes structures supporting the agricultural use, then those areas shall be eligible for open space classification. Areas being kept as managed meadows, which may require occasional maintenance mowing or clearing of invasive species for conservation purposes. Areas which include historic stone walls, which shall not be considered fenced in. Land set aside under the open space requirements for a subdivision or a conservation subdivision shall not be eligible for enrollment in, to make that PA, in PA 490. Such land is to be preserved permanently as open space as described in the subdivision regulations of the town of Tom. Any for your thought? Yeah, I would like to ask Valerie a question. How, what parts of this would you change if you were changing this document versus versus mine? Yes. Yeah. So the first thing is, is as I was saying to Tara before we reopened that um, the first open bullet where it says forested land. At our last meeting, we had agreed that we were going to remove the specification about acreage on forested land. Yeah. Was... Because, and so that I would strike. And if, before we agree to strike one way or the other, I just want to clarify why I left it in. Um, 
was to make it clear to people who have forested parcels that do not qualify for the forest land classification that they have an option. So that is why I chose to leave it there for consideration. And I tried to make it clearer based on the feedback that we had. So if you guys want to strike it, you can go ahead and strike it. Strike it. You want to scratch it? Yeah. Um, so there's that. I would also. How do you want to? I would. Want okay. to, we're going to scratch that then. Yeah. Um, and so I guess then you would need to say being farmed or forested in forest land or yeah or forest. Is that the second bullet I have, point? I have a hard time with all of this. I'm sorry. I apologize. I really do. Um, so on the second open bullet, land which is being farmed or forested for personal use. So let me ask you a clarifying question there. Why would you think that it would be better to refer to forested for personal use as opposed to just saying if you have a forested parcel that doesn't happen to qualify for forest land, you can still qualify for open space. We discussed this the last time because you shouldn't have to qualify. You shouldn't have to go through the process of qualification. That's and, and, and that's exactly what it's stating. Statute. No, it's stating that it doesn't qualify, which yes. implies that you have tried to qualify and were rejected. So, the, so you were rejected from that, so you can leave it but, at open space. But you have to have been rejected in order to apply for open space. And so that's why I object to it. Uh, so, and then because we've removed fencing, I would take out the last bullet about um, it, where it says shall not be considered fenced in. Just say. But you want to leave historic zone walls, or you, and you just want to take out the fenced in or take out the whole bullet point? Well, I want to make sure that. We're talking about any open land. And what it's being used for has very little to do with whether it's open or not. Excuse me, Valerie, just to clarify, I think when you, um, Mr. Blackmer, when you were saying they don't qualify, what that really means, are you saying that because you have to? pay like a lot of money to get a certification. That's why you, you yeah. don't want people, you don't want the misunderstanding that they have to qualify first, but then they will have to go for that application, which is I don't know, $3,500. No, I, I, I really don't know how much it costs. I, I didn't think it was anywhere near that. And I think it's based on a per acre. I can't imagine, well, if it's $3,500, it's, yeah, it's possible with that, but I would think that would be in, the hundreds of hundred of acres or more, not uh, somebody that had twenty five. Well, well, I know and have my dam inspection is almost two thousand dollars. I have to hire an engineer to do that, and you know, just that's so, an that. But that was her concern. I, I think I was just trying to clarify. Your concern is you don't want to have someone to have to go through the qualification process because it, it would have to spend that money. It's expensive. Um, and then, then if they're rejected, then they will. Then they can go for open space, but they've already had to spend the five hundred or five thousand dollars money. And and we could leave forest land, and we could leave the first open bullet, and say forested land parcels greater than or equal to three acres. How about this edit, which might be even simpler, but still gives more detail. Forested land, which is just not otherwise enrolled in the forest, because then there's no Sounds implication good. of- Forest land not otherwise enrolled in the forest land, PA 490 program, whatever that citation is. And then we can give the examples, but there's no implication of qualification. Somebody might wonder, well, why wouldn't I enroll? And here are some examples of why you wouldn't be enrolled. Thank you. Okay, there was that one, and then the bottom. And then the bottom one, I mean, 
Do we? It doesn't need to be there because we've removed fencing. Yeah. So strike it entirely. Strike it entirely. Okay. And then backing it up. Bullet point four. I'm thinking about two things. One is that we've been talking about the golf courses and we've been talking about Speedway, but we, I also now recall one of the quotations that I had cited in my letter to the commission said that enhance public recreation opportunities, both the golf courses and the Speedway enhance public recreation opportunities. So I think they fall under the open space criteria. And so I think that, that restricting graveled or paved, the other thing is, is that as a, a landowner, in order to maintain my fields as pasture or meadows, I have to be able to access them. And oftentimes that means that I need a graveled or graded area in order to access them. I wouldn't want that to be considered. I question I, I, graveling a driveway into a field, I wouldn't consider a graveled parking area. I don't think it's, I don't think I would either. Okay. But I, it leaves a lot open to interpretation when you say gravel. Paved. What is stating as a parking area but not an access road? Okay. And an access road would be something that you're trying to get into the property. I, I'm not. Yep, I hear you. Okay. You know, and the, and the only thing there is that those parking areas allow for recreational access. Right. Thank you for asking. That's, that's a good point. Right. It's if it's a recreation area, then do you not include its public recreation? Say, put a gravel parking lot area in there. What's your thought on that? It was actually a discussion about this four or five years ago about taking a certain section of land and turning it into an open public. Situation, but it was their open space and had a gravel lot. So it was a water, it was a water thing. Generally speaking, you put down gravel or pavement where there's no. In, in this particular case, it was an old gravel pit. <laughs> so I mean, I, let's let's be let's be real specific about it. So, yes. <laughs> so and I think that's going to be the rarity. Oh, no, I I agree that that generally gravel parking lot outside of outside of these are parcels that are kind of known. A gravel parking area the property. No, but this was for public recreation. They opening to the water and actually surround actually land trust. So, so it, to allow access to that property also and it gave a parking area. But so Vern, was that a privately owned public? <laughs> okay. So that's why I have trouble with that that yeah, paragraph yeah. and where you just said, well, you know, that's kind of a confusing one. You know, I think there are a lot of examples that would come up under this bullet that aren't clear and we're trying to be clear. So I think so, not having it makes it clearer. But under forestry program. That area. Uh, 
Not to cut you off, David, but we're back into we're past the citizens' comments. Okay. Any, uh, oh, what's your preference? You want to vote on these one bullet at a time, or? I, I actually think we should decide whether we're going to go with this or we're going with Valerie's one or the other. And I, you know, I, I'm trying to get to something that is close, has all the pieces in it that we need, yet is as close to what your document is. And that's why I asked the question, what would you change? And I get where you're going with this. And I think that it's definitely, it, so if that was the only thing on here, is there anything else? Let's, let's come back to that. Yeah. Do we need the where we're not including lawn grasses anymore? Shouldn't we be able to strike the open bullet tree? Yeah. And once you do all of those things. You have so little definition, and that's why I did the one I did. Because oh, I mean, is there, so if you take off the gravel and so forth, now, now I'm gonna go back and ask here a question, mm -hmm. which is how far apart are these and what components of yours, your draft is gonna make it any better for anybody than what Valerie put together. I still think that this, even in this blended version, has more clarity and better definition, but that is for you guys to decide. I am going to present whatever you guys pass through. Well, do we want to ask Kai's? Because she's. she's Kai, do you live in a. Kai's is here, yes. You didn't have the uh, advantage in being able, well, maybe, could she you see what's your... She can see what's up. Yep, okay. I can see. Do you think, uh, do you have uh, Valerie's copy to see what the difference is? No, but I've been listening along and, um, I mean, I, I don't see why we couldn't merge both of them together. I mean, I thought what you guys have been doing, going along, merging, you know, taking everybody's thoughts and putting them into Tira's. And, you know, um, I think Valerie and Tira worked very hard on both of these. And I think they both sound great. Um, it's hard to decide on which one is to go with, but I think as merging bullet, you know, uh, merging bullet points and, uh, uh, and you know, um, at you know each bullet point we okay, and then you move on to the next. So you're saying you want to hold on each bullet point one at a time, or? I mean, what I mean is, yeah, I think that. I think you have to decide on which model you're using, and then if you want to go on mm -hmm. each bullet point, then you can do it that way. So I'm going to jump in and just say that also at this meeting, we heard both from folks on the phone in the public, as well as people in the room, that they were supporting the one that just said excluding dwelling units and commercial buildings, so which is the Valerie version. I, mean, I, I have no objections at this point if we put in either, either of these documents. So um, could we could we put um, could um, could we submit both and then? No. Uh, no, you're passing one set of recommendations up to PZC. Okay. No, I just okay, uh, they then again have the ability to also alter. Okay. All right, that's chair. I can still make a motion. I will move that we go with. The one that was just printed uh, with the two changes that we made to it, uh, the one on the open circle 
So we changed eligible to enrolled for the forest plan classification and scratching the bottom open circle. Two bullets. We were taking out those bottom two. Okay, taking out the bottom two bullets. You want me to read that again? Yes. With these? Okay. Uh, so just reading the bullet points. Actually, before you even bother, is there a second to that? There's no second to this. You don't need to read it. Somebody else make a motion. And it's seven minutes to nine. It's uh, past farmer's time. That's right. <laughs> past planner's time, too. <laughs> So Brian's looking at me. I move that we recommend the version that I wrote, changing PZ490 in the bottom bullet to PA490. I will second that. Okay, the motion made and seconded to go with Valerie's uh, um, Paper with uh, the minor correction, PA 490 instead of PZ 490. The motion and the second vote in discussion. Hearing none, those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Guys, guys, you're on mute. Yep, I said aye. Sorry. Okay. To myself, I guess. Uh -huh. And I have vote no, but majority rules. Okay. Is there more that we need to do tonight? No. I was going to take this, more. carry uh, Valerie's uh, bullet points over into the preamble stuff for the POCD, and present it to P and Z for their discussion and possible action on Monday's meeting. Yep. Okay. I think we have some more agenda items that we can breeze through quickly. Is that correct? Lost my agenda. Well, we're down to an agenda for the next meeting. That's what you're talking about. Yep. The only other thing is we just said we we're going to read the minute. Uh, oh, the, the, we're going to read in the emails. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Emails. All right. Yep. Yep. I printed them out. Uh, so these were received. See, like most of them came in on the 26th of January, 26th or 27th. So the first one here is from Angela Offier. Did I say your name right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I am writing to express my strong support for open space to be a category in the town of Thompson that qualifies for lower tax benefits assessments under PA 490. Open space is important to protect the environment, quality of life, and preserve local heritage in our town. Open space is worthy of protection. The next one is from Diane Chapin. It has come to my attention that the open space exemption is being challenged in Thompson. As a property owner and registered voter, I would like to go on record as fully supporting the open space exemption as it has been these past years. I fully support incentives to keep Thompson rural and open. Uh, this one is from Danielle Lefebvre or Lefebvre. Uh, it has come to my attention that the open space exemption is being challenged in Thompson. I fully support incentives to keep Thompson rural and open. As a property owner and registered voter, I would like to go on record as fully supporting the open space exemption as it has been these past years. Uh, this one is from Fran Morano. The day I have heard that the town is considering removing the open space designation. As a town member with a property that includes open space, I would like to respectfully request that this category be preserved. Part of Thompson's charm is due to the rural and agricultural nature of those spaces. Thank you, Francesca Morano. This one is from Julie Rumrill. As a resident of Thompson, I am writing to express my concern regarding the challenge to the open space tax exemption. Open space should be encouraged or we face the possibility of losing all our natural beauty and that which draws others to our town. 
with that open space, we will eventually go the way of Manchester, very sad, being overrun with condos and strip malls. Please consider being an agent of preservation while there is still a chance to do so. Those with open space should be encouraged to keep it that way for the health and welfare of the greater community. Thank you for your consideration. It's from Mary Rumrill. As a resident landowner and registered voter in the town of Thompson, I am writing to express my full support of the open space category under PA 490. Open space must be preserved for this and future generations. From Robert Rumrill. I support open space in the town of Thompson and landowners, landowners being able to qualify for lower tax assessment under PA 490. And the last one I have is from Thomas Poplowski. Hello, Tira Pangesic. I have lived in Thompson for 63 years. I remember when all the town offices were above the town garage. A gentleman by the name of Mr. Prince was our assessor. It was sometime back in 1963 or 1964. The criteria for PA 490 landowner open space was at least 10 acres and no change of ownership or developing at least 10 years or fine prorated based on the years left. One question I have, who, when, and how did the number 10 acres come into play? That number always was the number. In looking at the Connecticut PA 490, the Connecticut Farm Bureau Association Incorporated does give some good reading and direction. He includes a link to the 490 guide. Examples of open space criteria, page 25 of 60 on the PDF, page 19 in their guide, town of Brooklyn, town of Putnam, town of Ridgefield, is something in those lines that the Thompson landowners might be in agreement with. Please share this with others. Thompson is a quiet and peaceful town. As you know well, that change does not come easy in this town. As a little boy riding my bike at the corner of Pompeo and Wilsonville Road near the pond, a three by four foot bulletin board stood. And whenever a meeting was posted, it was on that board. Many other boards were in town and communication did happen. Good communication is what I am sending to you. Thank you for your time, Thomas Poplowski. And that is what I received. Yes, it we either responded to them or they had some misinformation on a couple of them. But um, yeah, I did reply to a couple of them. All right. Um, agenda for the next meeting. We don't. I don't have anything particular in mind at this point. Let's just review where this has gone. No. In the next meeting will be our regular meeting. Is March 30th? Is it? Yeah. There's nothing set for that. Okay. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion made. Those in favor say aye. Aye. Those no. Motion carries. Six minutes.